you. Joining me now in the studio is former Detective Chief Inspector, a man who's worked on a number of high-profile cases, including the murder of Sarah Everard. Simon Harding, welcome to Jeremy Kyle Hi. Investigates. Can you treat me um, as a man who has no understanding of police matters? But I have one question for you. Literally, in less than an hour before we came on air tonight, this, this statement from the police, high risk and specific vulnerabilities this morning, followed by this statement just now saying, uh, alcohol problems, a disturbance at the house in January, nobody arrested. Um, they presumably have known that since the start of this. Why did Lancashire police, with the greatest of respect, come straight out and say the river three weeks ago? Do you believe that was the right approach? The new information is, um, I think, has been brought about in a, in a little bit of a panic under stress as well, because the, the senior officer there is, is telling us that there is an awful lot going on. All the sort of things that you would expect to go on are going on. They have engaged with the National Crime Agency and all the sort of niche services they can bring in to help in, in how to search and, and the river and the tidal, all those sort of things that you would want. But I don't think it was planned to say about the vulnerabilities because if you had your strategies right at the beginning in terms of your media, you would just say, here are my three hypotheses, as the superintendent said, that she's either in the river, uh, whether voluntarily or not, that she has left of her own accord or she has left through third party. But we never heard about three hypotheses for the but last three But they, would, they would be there. I think she, what she said was that they're always... Look, they're going to be there, they're, they're always looked, they're always reviewed... And but my question evidence. is very simple. They will have had that information about her vulnerabilities and why she's a high-risk missing person. Why, if they knew that, Si, did they come out and say straight away she's fallen in the river? Well, I don't know. I think it's probably bad media advice, possibly. Um, but I think you wouldn't have to say anything like that if you'd have said you give weight to all of your different hypotheses. They're all the same. They all carry the same weight because they are all possibilities that cannot be discarded unless there is evidence to discard each one. I mean, I think that's the point. I, I assume, and I don't want to criticise the police, but I have to ask the question. You would assume that somebody in Lancashire Police has thought that if this poor woman had alcohol issues, and we talk about the 10th of January and that visit to the house, they will have known about that because that will have been on record, mm -hmm. that somebody went, well, obviously she's got alcohol issues and she's fallen in the river. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't necessarily make that jump from, from alcoholism to you know, to being in the river. Out, you know, if, if she is vulnerable in that way, she could have walked away herself and gone away as far as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's gone into the river. No, but it gave rise, this is what I'm trying to get to, is it gave rise to everybody getting involved with other theories. And yeah. Peter Folding, who will be on, you know, bringing all of this sonar equipment and almost dredging this river, to be honest, and saying, there's nobody there. Um... I don't want to put you in a difficult position, but do you think that the police approached this case in the wrong way? I don't, the get -go? I don't think... It, from, from what the superintendent said today, the things that I would expect to have been done are being done. And she is, uh, she's pointed out that. I think the messaging, as I said before, is, is what has caused this. If your messaging is, I am giving weight to all three of these hypotheses and not one is favoured in the other because I don't have the evidence to push it into one, then you wouldn't even need to mention vulnerabilities. And I think possibly she's mentioned that in the, under pressure in that conference, realised that the family haven't been briefed on that, that she was going to say that, hence why you've then had a second one. Because anything that you say as an SIO in front of uh, the press, whether it's uh, an appeal or um, something of that nature, you run it always past the family first. So there are no surprises... So your to... belief today is that Nicola Bully's family, who have suffered already unbelievable, well, unbelievably in the last three weeks, wouldn't, would have been blindsided by the press it's conference a, it's, this it's, morning. It's one possibility. But that is mishandling the situation, isn't it? it? It's, it's, I think it was a bit of pressure that probably hasn't been seen like that for, for, for an SIO for quite a long time, and, and perhaps that's the reaction. Um, and it could well be the first time that her poor children have heard about this because the, the media, as, as Ollie said, have covered this in, in every single way across the world. Um, later on, we're going to talk to um, Peter Falding, the diver and forensic search analyst, and also Mark Williams-Thomas, an investigative journalist and former policeman who has also arrived at the scene to help out. And I'm not being critical, but can you explain to me, um, if the police are competent, why has there been this 
number of third-party contractors and ex-experts suddenly landing in Lancashire to give help. And Falding said to me, the police had done a great job. I've no doubt Mark Williams will probably say to me, Thomas, the police had done a great job. But if the police were doing a great job, why would these two and others be joining them? My opinion on that really is I don't think, I don't think that Peter or Mark are going to bring up anything the police might not know already because of the people they've been asked to help already, the NCA and everybody else. What, what you can do to prevent that kind of thing happening is, is that crime scene in terms of a scene. I call it a crime scene because it could be a crime scene still. There is that remote possibility. Um, but if you have control of an area... For example, if Peter's returning now to do to look at groundwork and, I don't and deposition, that, he's a diving expert. I'm gonna yeah, put that I don't. To him. I mean, I don't. I don't know what what he can do to bring to bring more to that. But if you control that scene, for example, in in 2020, that um, Nicole Smallman and, and Bieber Henry, you know, I controlled that scene for three weeks because, you know, there was there was going to be no one could go into that scene after I dealt with it that could change anything that so, I. So, so you're you're with me throughout the next hour, and I'm delighted that you are. One final question, Simon, before we go to the break. By saying they believed this girl, this lady, had fallen into the river and not mentioning the other two lines of inquiry, for whatever reason, you make a very, very salient and the biggest point in my mind. That area became a hotbed for TikTok people and reporters to, 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 to run. Why didn't the police cordon off that area from the very first moment? I don't know, and that would be part of the decision-making yeah. process that might come out later on, but... Um... It's deplorable what's happening with everybody turning up there and it, it, it could have been prevented. It might still have happened once the corns have come down, but certainly the control would have been there at the beginning and I think that's probably where the catch-up is, is, is a problem. 